Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Crossed pistols, Harper's Ferry flintlocks, weapons that once played their part in the shaping of our history. Today, the insignia of the United States Army's military policeman, the man familiarly known as the MP. He wears the insignia with pride, for he knows the record of his corps. He knows the role played by the MP in those first critical hours of the European invasion during World War II. There, he proved himself a first-class soldier while carrying out his specialized job of speeding the urgent flow of military traffic. In the prolonged fighting that lay ahead, he was still there as the combat soldier, the combat policeman too, shouldering new responsibilities. His was the task of dealing with civilian populations, both friendly and enemy, whose towns lay in the path of the Allied advance. A task requiring the highest integrity, discretion, and understanding. His was the job of protecting army stores and government property, coping with saboteurs and pilferers, Recovering badly needed supplies. It was the military police, too, who dealt with multiplying numbers of war prisoners, guarding, processing, moving them back. The MP mission was spread on a worldwide stage. Europe, the Pacific, North Africa, In the Korean War, the military policemen faced the same tasks, made more complex by forbidding terrain and the sly and brutal character of his enemy. As prisoner of war totals grew to massive proportions, his professional skill was more and more important to the entire effort in Korea. He controlled the flow of uprooted natives who imperiled themselves and the cause of their allies as they clogged Korean highways, vitally important to military movement. Then, as in the past, he continued to be first and foremost an able combat soldier, ready for engagement with the main force of the enemy or with the ever-present bands of guerrilla fighters. In the supply ports of both Japan and Korea, he was charged with the safeguarding of vast amounts of American and Allied property. It was during the prisoner of war exchanges that the MP's role took on fresh significance. To the American soldier returning from long and inhuman imprisonment, these men personified the basic concept of the military police as a body of the troops and for the troops. Proud of the part he had played, the MP took his place in the Allied Honor Guard at the negotiations that marked the end of the Korean fighting. Since those dark days, there have been other sporadic eruptions on the international scene, such as the Lebanon crisis. These have found the military police continuing their close liaison with the law enforcement agencies of friendly nations. It is this 
most close association, calling for intelligence, tact, and goodwill, that has cast the military policeman in yet another new role. Today, among the Allied nations, he has become, in effect, an ambassador without portfolio, an ambassador of goodwill. And here at home, Americans know from first-hand experience the calm efficiency of the MP in an emergency. In major disasters, civilian agencies have found a godsend in military police assistance. Where nature itself has gone on the rampage, the MP has been there to restore order to paralyzed communities and to render relief. Working with practiced self-assurance, he has revealed himself as a sympathetic friend in uniform. Who is the military policeman? What kind of man is selected and trained to carry out these duties that continually increase in number, complexity and responsibility? The best way to find out is to look in on the training program followed at the Provo Marshal General Center at Fort Gordon, Georgia. Here to extend an invitation to visit the center is the Provo Marshal General of the United States Army, Major General Ralph J. Butchers. Not until World War I was an effort made to establish a military police corps as a permanent branch of the Army. The effort failed, but a beginning had been made. With World War II, the Corps of Military Police became a reality. World War II also saw a marked change in the concept of the military policeman of the troops and for the troops became our motto and our watchword. With his other responsibilities, the military policeman assumed the job of helping the serviceman, keeping him out of trouble. At that same time, the combat MP came into being. The new military policeman is a man of stature, of integrity, a man skilled in the arts of law enforcement, able to take his place as a soldier of top caliber. The best summation of the military policeman's standards was stated by that far-sighted hero of World War I, General of the Army, John J. Pershing. He said, a private in this organization must possess all of the prerequisites usually expected of non-commissioned officers in other branches. To see how these standards are attained, and for a glimpse of military police functions not too familiar, I cordially invite you to Fort Gordon, Georgia. To the Provo Marshal School come the men who have qualified for training in this elite corps. They are selected men who have already met the Army's induction requirements and completed basic training. Nevertheless, the prospective trainee will undergo new and closer examination. Searching interviews will make certain of his desirability as a trainee. Military bearing, alertness, general intelligence, and level of education are all important considerations. Later, a careful evaluation will make sure he has the emotional stability for a military policeman's career. Soon after he is accepted for MP training, the soldier learns that he must conform to the most exacting standards of military conduct. He is expected to be not just a soldier, but the best soldier. Pride in self and military bearing, together with growing pride in his corps, soon become a vital part of the trainee's school career.
On the school's firing range, the new trainees will learn to handle the 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol, the MP's own weapon. He will learn to drive those types of vehicles commonly used in military police work and through hours of practice over a specially constructed driving course to execute every type of driving maneuver and to signal by the book. Even the smallest mistake is immediately corrected by the instructor. For these men, in order to improve the driving habits of others, must themselves become experts behind the wheel. He will also learn judo as taught by experts. In addition to an effective technique for coping with violence, he will have gained much in terms of improved coordination, physical agility, and self-assurance. In classroom sessions, the trainee runs head-on into the specialized subjects which are part of police work. In this case, the right way to search a suspect who may be armed. Formal classroom instruction is only a beginning. In a perfectly detailed reconstruction of a typical military police station, students put their new skills into practice. With a final reminder from their instructor about the importance of recording all pertinent information in their notebooks, this group goes out on two-man patrols to deal with realistic, pre-arranged incidents. The trainees are not told in advance what kind of situations they will meet, or when to expect them. Other soldiers, temporarily turned actors, have been previously instructed in their roles. These incidents are designed to test the student MPs in the techniques of investigation, apprehension, and interrogation already learned in class. If the trainee should overlook any aspect of correct procedure, he'll be told about it later, with emphasis. Other types of patrols find themselves similarly faced with the unexpected. Here, a motor patrol receives a call, perhaps to investigate an accident. At the scene, the circumstances may involve arrests or even the giving of first aid. The subject in this situation may be playing the part of a sick man, the victim of foul play, a suspected thief playing possum. But whatever his role, he will be witness to the tact, intelligence, and efficiency shown by his two escorts. He and all other soldier actors, along with the trainees on patrol, will return to the military police station for the final phase of the exercise. This critique tests the trainees on their knowledge of military police station procedures. Questions fired at the trainees by veteran MP sergeants will reveal just how well the lessons learned in class have been applied in actual practice. In this case, the trainee failed to question his suspects carefully enough. A sales slip indicates the radio in question was the suspect's own property. In actual practice, a situation like this seldom occurs, thanks to the effectiveness of this kind of realistic training session. That's the way you learn. Better luck next time, soldier. The principle of reinforcing classroom instruction with live reenactments which closely duplicate actual police work carries into every phase of the training schedule. Trainees learning the techniques employed in mob dispersal will translate those teachings into action, again with the enthusiastic cooperation of other soldier personnel in the role of rioters.
As enemy troops, the soldier actors may assume a different role to give MP students a practical exercise in another important military police function, the handling of prisoners of war. In the public mind, the MP is inevitably associated with control of traffic, for it's the activity in which he is most frequently seen. Here again, formal instruction followed by practical exercise is the key to the precision and skill which mark the military policeman. At army installations everywhere, he is a familiar figure, directing heavy traffic with what seems to be effortless efficiency.